Hello there, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to the new episode of the Future Hour. And today, this is a special episode dedicated to Algorand. Uh, first of all, uh, to those who are, are listening and, and are still a bit unfamiliar with Algorand itself, we have uh, two entities. One is known as Algorand Incorporated, or just known as Algorand, and one's Algorand Foundation. So, if I would say to Tenyo, I would say that. Algorand builds the Lego blocks so that others can assemble them. And Algorand Foundation attracts designers and entrepreneurs to use these blocks to build, you know, elaborate different kind of um, different type of Lego types to make all the kids happy. So I actually got this from a friend Amy when I asked her that question as well. Uh, but the, the idea is that um, Algorand Incorporated actually builds on the protocol layer itself. And then the Algorand Foundation looks into ecosystem development. And so we then um, say that, hey, with this building blocks, the Lego blocks, you can build all kinds of different things uh, that are good use cases, that are good applications for the world. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's absolutely incredible. At the Algorand Foundations really focusing on building the community and making the meaningful impact, right? So mm -hmm. there's a question. The Nod advisor, Dr. Cole Pierre George, his FinTech Innovation Hub received a very generous grant from the Algorand Foundation to establish an Algorand FinTech Innovation Hub at University of Cape Town. And what are some of the key criteria for a project to receive grants from the Algorand Foundation? Yeah, that's right. So the University of Cape Town in uh, South Africa, we're really glad to partner with them uh, to look yes. into uh, really, uh, we've provided the grant for you know, Dr. Kopia George and the team there. So we do have a grant program known as the 250 million ELGO grants program. And that grants program uh, supports the funding of projects and proposals that uh, advance the ELGO grant ecosystem. So we do have a few criteria. We have uh, like a bit of a grant scorecard. So questions like, um, does this project fit with Algorand's long-term strategic priorities? Or does it either bring new users to the Algorand network or bridge use cases for Algorand? Or can the project uh, be sustained or scaled after the grant ends as well? It needs to be sustainable in, in the projects that you're funding. Or does it uh, make a substantive enough contribution that it actually warrants funding itself? Or can it be self-funded altogether? So... We have all these criteria that we use and an and internal evaluation team that looks into this. Uh, but on a high level, we've got about over 100 grants funded already. And uh, recently, in the last couple of months, we've got about 100 grants applications in the pipeline. So the, the program is quite robust. And yeah, we're quite excited. Uh, like this innovation hub with UCT and also with um, onboarding more grants projects uh, into the algorithm ecosystem. Right. Because um, it's... You know, I just have to ask about this, right? Because it was a huge news back in June, uh, the $2 million Algorand Trailblazer Bounty Program. So, yes. um, and exactly with what you said, right? What was the latest, most exciting news that specifically about the program that you uh, can share with us? Yeah, that's right. So we launched the program about um, two months ago. And it's a new program. It's, it's specifically focused on developers. It's, and and uh, we're quite excited to actually see the program uh, go. In, in essence, in the last uh, two months itself, we've actually uh, funded over uh, 40 different projects um, out of about uh, 55 to 60 different applications. It's a, it means about 75% completion rate. And it's worth noting that over 10 of these submissions uh, really improve Algorand's core code or our SDKs. So it's great to see like multiple developers, you know, go into the code, improve it with the other ecosystem developers. And we've got a couple of high value bounties as well, about, about up to 4,000 algo tokens, you know, for successful uh, decentralized application projects. And uh, mm -hmm. and we've, we've got some really interesting uh, data as well. A lot of um, US-based, EU and Asia-based submissions, just to name a few countries uh, that have participated in our Trailblazer bounty program. You've got Singapore, nice. Switzerland, Spain, uh, Kazakhstan, the Czech Republic, Croatia. So there's a lot of different uh, developers. Um, so we are we're looking forward to have uh, more representation, specifically from like right. Africa, 
the South American continent and also yes. really um, have more sort of bounties that would um, help with the growth of uh, the development of the elk brand ecosystem. Absolutely. So one more follow-up question with that. Within yeah. the next 12 months, what other actions and plans do you have uh, or the Al Grant Foundation have on supporting more specifically when it comes to educating and um, education for the youth or students? Yeah, great, Jesse. I, I know that's an area that you're quite passionate about, you know, in, in young people. Absolutely. And, yes. and so is the El Grand Foundation as well. Uh, we we partner with a lot of student clubs. Uh, one of them is, is the Enfield Cup, you know, arguably one of the largest student network in um, the blockchain world. Uh, also with uh -huh. the Blockchain Acceleration Foundation. And uh, within the next 12 months, we are looking at launching what you call the ACE program or the Algorand Center of Excellence. And that is a, a large program that partners with universities to support with research funding, with supporting uh, undergraduates, academics in really uh, working on the Algorand right. ecosystem. And, and we provide funding for that as well. So, so there's going to be a lot of activity to support that. In fact, we just hired one full-time program manager just working on this particular ACE program itself. So you're going to see a lot of right. activity, a lot of outcomes being generated in working with the young people uh, of our generation. Yes. Yeah. The Future Hour today, I'm super happy and glad and honored to have my dear friend and longtime investor, Ash, and one of the best IP lawyer from California to be on the podcast. Thank you so much for being here, brother. Thank you for having me. So happy so, to be here. Yes. Evaluate a good project. Would you elaborate a little bit on that? And why do you pick Algo specifically? Well, when I look at a project, I like to look at the long-term dynamics. Uh, we're not in this for a pump and dump, yeah, right? Absolutely. Uh, so if I want to invest in something, I want it to be around in a year, in five years, in 10 years, 20 years, in 100 years, mm -hmm. hopefully. Yeah. And so it's really solid to see a strong team, um, a fair ecosystem, and a well-balanced community. And so I look at all those aspects before I make a decision. Um, the last thing I look at is Facebook or Twitter or like Reddit or like what someone is saying, right? Mm -hmm. uh, all decisions come from research and calculated decision making. Mm -hmm. um, so I would say the most important things are look at the roadmap, look at the team, look at the community, make sure it's legit, make sure that there's a real community behind it. It's not just uh, copy paste or some sort of scam. And if there's some sort of good ecosystem, even better, if there's a solid ecosystem with a vibrant community and a great team, that's the project for you. For me, that was Algorand because it has such a great team. It has such a great community, great technology. It seemed like a no brainer. I thought that the timing was great. I still actually think the timing is great for that one. So make what's right for you to make the right decision for you. It could be different from what's in it for me. I'm a big believer in everyone making their own decisions uh, based on the information that makes sense to them. So don't just be a parrot. Don't be a monkey. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think always do your own research and find out about what people are actually doing versus um, some other project they might be saying in their marketing material right and literally on top of what you're mentioning see what they do see their roadmap and i know that because i actually personally follow them quite a bit i know that algorand they have done a few hackathon uh, this year in let's say melbourne university or monash university in, over there in australia to do the hackathon and these kind of things that very encouraging uh, activity within the community i think those are usually great signs right yeah those are great signs if there's an active hackathon active development uh development community those are great signs look at you know the team as well algorand is great algorand is great it's it solves a lot of the problems yeah. that were out there in blockchain the, the right? Trilemma, the, right yeah the trilemma so uh it's secure it's, it's decentralized and it's also safe yeah. uh and um it has Fast transaction times as well. Yes, so so uh, the speed, the security, the scalability, it makes a very, very uh, solid blockchain for the future. 
And I believe that they have a bunch of other applications that they are building currently, such as Yoli. Yoli, and also they are building towards something that for NFT, whole, the whole ecosystem as well, right? Do you have a comment or two on that, maybe? Yeah, so NFTs are great. It's like digital collectible, digital art, uh, non fungible token. The great thing about NFT is that it lives forever on the blockchain. One key feature about Algorand is that it does not fork ever. Mm -hmm. So your NFT on the Algorand blockchain will always be that copy. It could never fork. So let's say on another blockchain, the blockchain forks. Well, now you have two copies of the NFT. Impossible on Algorand. So that's one major benefit of launching NFTs on Algorand. The other is that the transaction fees are very low. Mm -hmm. um, and so with low fees, you could, if you don't have a lot of upfront investment, you can still put out your NFTs and get them out there. Um, it's also very fast. So once you start using the Algorand blockchain, you'll see how fast it is compared to some of the other major ones. Uh, so it makes it much quicker and much more efficient to both buy and sell NFTs or operate a marketplace. Um, it's going to be, I think, one of the major NFT players, even though that might not have been the original use case for Algo. Uh, I could definitely see that because of those features. Yes. Absolutely. I think transaction uh, time and low gas fee is something so, so, so important for all the creators out there to want to put their own mark yeah. into this industry. So, okay, quick and somewhat quote unquote challenge question for you. I don't think it's going to be that big a challenge. How do you explain in such simple term other people who don't know anything about all grand blockchain what their blockchain is about well to back it up real quick a blockchain itself because people might not know it, it's like a distributed ledger so it's like think of it like uh like a workbook which everyone agrees on like it could be like a spreadsheet that everyone agrees on so nice. it's a, a ledger but it's distributed and everyone agrees on it. So now we're all on the same page, we're on the same workbook. And so uh, that's what a blockchain is. So that makes it much easier to transact, do business. So Algorand specifically is a proof of stake blockchain. Um, so that means that the verification procedures are done on chain, um, as opposed to some other blockchains, which are proof of work, which require mining. There will never be mining in Algorand. Right. Um, you actually... <laughs> Very important. Yeah. Um, Algorand is a pure proof of stake, uh, which for its own reasons, it makes it very fast, very efficient, um, and very environmentally friendly as well. Um, now, the Algorand blockchain specifically, some other benefits are it's very secure. The way it's written, the programming language is more constrained. So you're more limited maybe in how you can write your smart contract, but this is a benefit because you don't want it to be so open as to cause vulnerabilities, right? Uh, so it is called a non-Turing complete programming language um, or a smart contract system, which basically means that there's not really any loops uh, or recursion when you're making the smart contract. Uh, it basically forces the developer to make a very clean, efficient smart contract without the extra complexity that is in many of the other blockchains. This makes it very suitable for enterprises, for companies, for anyone who has serious financial incentives like a financial system to use Algo because of those security features. So when you combine that with the speed, and also the decentralization, it makes it very attractive as a public blockchain for these use cases. Yes, and I think on top of that, maybe a lot of listeners out there have been seeing the price of the token been going up since September uh, 2021. But on top of what Ash just pointed out that all the infrastructure has been in place all the dedicated individuals from Algorand, his own team and Algorand Foundation have been building that for years, years, years. 
that nowadays you see there's so much more news about them, but behind them, they've been working on this for like many, many years. So, and I think that is also something very important for anyone to look into a project they want to follow or a project they want to support, right? Well, yeah, of course. Algorand team, some of the best, you know, well-known, established people in this space. Yeah. Uh, the founder. Professor McCallie. Yeah. The founder, uh, Professor MIT. Yeah. And the rest of the team, very well established. Do your own research. But based on my research, these guys know what they're talking about. They've been in the industry. They are dedicated computer scientists, economists, business people, executives. And um, they have the knowledge basically to do what they're trying to do. And they're doing it. Um, so it's so important to look at the team because, you know, if you don't do that, then you don't really know what you're getting into. Just the way computer programs are in, you can copy paste, right? So someone could copy paste another blockchain, call it whatever, call it jazzy chain. <laughs> and here you go is a new chain. But I think some, I think people are actually doing that in the industry. Like, yeah, unfortunately. It's, it's, it is unfortunate, but uh, it's something to be aware of. So yeah. look at the team because it's too easy for some people to have, you know, the most greatest thing in the world. But, you know, it's... With all the keywords. Yeah, without, without the support, without, you know, having it evolve into something that's serious, something that will be used. Um, so there's a, there's a few great blockchains, including Algorand, which they... They are who they say they are, and Algorand was created from the ground up. Yeah, it's not a fork of another chain. It's not a copy. It's not a clone. It's created from the ground up, so it has its own structure, its own dynamics. Yeah, and um, it will, in my opinion, be one of the top chains. I do believe that the future is interoperability. There's not going to be just one chain. It's not going to be just one Bitcoin or just one Ethereum or whatever. I think there's going to be at least a handful and Algorand will be one of them. Now, you know, I'm not a fortune teller. I'm not a guru. <laughs> We're not financial advisors. We're told to say that, but it's true. <laughs> and, you know, we can't predict anything from the future, but it's my strong belief that it will be. Yeah. And so yeah. we'll see. Yeah. yeah. Amazing insights over there. And, I definitely don't mean to get too spiritual on this specific answer, but I think there's something to the simplicity of the project's mission and this integrity of the team. I think something is just there that is also helping a big part of how much impact a project will have in the short term right in the long term. So. Yeah, the mission is so important for me specifically and then also for the blockchain as a whole and Absolutely. for everybody because in the end, we are a community, right? And we're a series of communities. And for Algorand specifically, the mission, I think, has been dedicated to the future of finance mm -hmm. as well as the borderless economy. If you think about our world, is getting smaller and smaller, right? Now everyone has, basically, most people have uh, watching this probably have mobile phones, Wi-Fi, network connections, we can communicate. You can call someone across the globe through Skype or through FaceTime or something. Mm -hmm. And our world is so small now, right? So our differences are also getting smaller and smaller. And we need a way to do commerce with each other yeah. because the old way is very difficult. Mm -hmm. It's very difficult. Even something simple as signing a contract, it, you have to have two different legal structures in two different countries. If you're trying to do a contract, maybe different languages, yeah. maybe different um, legal setup, different systems that you're using. Yeah. And so something as simple as a contract causes all this added friction. Um, now, something like Algorand creates a borderless economy, which makes it, it removes the friction. So now I can do business with someone across the globe much easier by a standard set of rules yeah. and a standard platform. This makes it so much easier to do business because now I have dependability. Yeah. And with dependability, I can invest more. My investors are also more happy. Yeah. Uh, it's more reliable. It's also because of the way the smart contract works, 
is more dependable. Mm -hmm. um, so this creates just such a great environment for us to collaborate as a worldwide community mm -hmm. as well. Yeah. And um, I think that's part of the core mission of Algorand. <clears throat> and I think that it's part of the reason why it will be one of the top chains, just that global focus of the orderless economy. <laughs> I think what you just mentioned from all different perspectives, whether from smart contract or from the ecosystem as a whole, and from various other perspectives, totally sums up their strength and their advantages. So with that said, last question for Mr. Ash, and I know that you're an extremely busy person, extremely busy lawyer and investor at the same time. Mm, would you say that on this day, September 19th, 2021, that we are in then bull run, we're in the middle of the bull run. Would you say that we have already learned from the past that all the things we have learned? Or that's part number one. And number two is that do you have any future trajectory about something interesting in the industry that you're excited about? Well, I think that we are always learning, right? If we've learned all that we've learned, then the game is basically over. Uh, and this game's not over. We're still learning. And this bull run is some people predicted, some people didn't, but we we keep constantly learning. And what was the second part? <laughs> <laughs> the second part is from your perspective, yeah. anything super interesting or super excited to you that you recommend other people to, to check it out as well? Well, exciting is Algorand, right? Uh, right now there's governance launching. So now, actually the token holders will be able to make decisions on the blockchain that is so exciting to me because it adds to the definition of the community right. and it gives basically more power to the token holders right. um, that is coming really soon the cool thing about algorand is just by holding the token you get a reward yeah um so if rewards are your thing i like rewards especially seeing them every day uh it makes me super excited on that um a few more exciting developments coming up. Uh, one is just the new dApps that are being launched. And I hear a few new ones coming out every week now. And it's going to be so exciting. Uh, in the legal space, we deal a lot with contracts, with business structures, with organizations. And it's a lot of paperwork, a lot of paperwork. And people hate it. People sometimes don't even look at the paperwork. Yeah. Don't do that. <laughs> but they sometimes don't even look at the paperwork. So blockchain solves a lot of these problems by having a centralized or decentralized set of rules, which can govern your organization. So now you have governance, which is automated by the, by the smart contract. And so this makes it so exciting for small businesses, makes it so exciting for organizations because now you have so much more security when you're doing business. Mm -hmm. So for example, if me and you know the guy down the street start a new business and we say, oh, he has 40%, I have 60%. Well, now if that's actually on the blockchain, it's final, everyone can see it. And there's no messing around, there's no funny business. Whereas if we were just kind of starting signing a contract together, it makes it much more messy. Like, is that contract valid? Has it been properly authenticated? Has it been overwritten by a subsequent contract? Is there any other involvement or other players? Like, it can get messy. Mm -hmm. But with, you know, on the blockchain, it's all set in stone. Yeah. Code becomes the law. Absolutely. Uh, for me, that's super exciting just because I think it gives you more clarity in business, gives you more structure, and it makes it less opaque and less shady. Yeah. Uh, so it's going to be great. Uh, it's just going to be so exciting. Anyway, with that said, thank you so much, brother, for your time. Me and the audience out there super, super appreciate your time, energy, and your insights. And yeah. for those who you don't know, Mr. Ash is one of the best IP lawyers in the entire California and just... Um, appreciate you to be on this conversation today and spending the time. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. To Thanks for having me. Absolutely, brother. This is the Future Hour and much love. We will see you next time. Peace. And today, this is a special episode dedicated to Algorand. Founded by MIT professor and Turing Award winner Silvio 
Michele, who is also an inventor scientist in the fields of computer science and cryptography. Algorand is a blockchain protocol and cryptocurrency that aims to empower users by giving them access to borderless, decentralized financial services. With the support from the Algorand Foundation, the Algorand Protocol aims to solve the blockchain trilemma of being simultaneously decentralized, stable, and secure. Powered by the native Algo coin, the Algorand ecosystem is a thriving, diverse, and future-thinking project that uses a novel consensus mechanism to verify transactions on the Algorand blockchain. And of course, special thanks and shout out to Mr. Jason Lee inspired me to create these pieces of content. In this video, we will talk about the Algorand ecosystem. We'll discuss the Algo coin, the novel pure proof of stake consensus mechanism, and many features and tools as well. Plus, we'll take a look at the team behind Algorand and of course, the Algorand Foundation. Number one, what is Algorand? I believe the name came from algorithm and random. <laughs> um, that's very interesting and lovely. Algorand is a highly scalable blockchain protocol and cryptocurrency developed to bridge the gap between traditional finance and blockchain technology. With the aim of becoming fully de decentralized, Algorand uses the normal pure proof of stake consensus mechanism to secure the network. Secure of the network is also the security of the network is something so, so important and many projects talks about. But what makes Algorand so special is that they are creating next generation financial products and protocol using their special consensus mechanism, which we'll talk about it in just a second. And the tools they develop are designed to enable businesses and individuals to harness the power and utility of smart contract enabled blockchains. Also, they enable users to create and deploy cryptocurrencies, non-fungible tokens, such as NFTs, securities, and stable coins as well. Plus, all grant technology utilizes a series of robust layer one blockchains and co-chains to facilitate automatic token transfers and the issuance of customizable Algorand standard assets, which we'll talk about that a little bit later on in the video. And all of that is achieved in a simple cost effective manner, right? It is super, super important for the blockchain when people are making transactions and using the network, make sure the gas fee is relatively low and make sure the transaction is in the speed that is really serving the users on the network, right? And also, Algorand is empowering users to create innovative financial tools and services designed for the future of finance. Algorand has designed the world's first pure proof of stake foundation blockchain to service both individuals and businesses. Okay, after all of that, let's jump into Algorand core protocol. And what they're doing is, in relatively simple term, by removing many of the technical hurdles that often hinder mainstream blockchain adoption, right? They enable users with limited technical knowledge to build and deploy financial tools and services on a whole new level. These tools and services offer many different functions and can play several different roles as well. Pure proof of stake. You might have heard of proof of stake versus proof of work before. Okay, and then now what is pure proof of stake means? This consensus mechanism ensures that complete participation, speed, and scalability are maintained across the entire decentralized algorithm network. It allows for near instant block confirmation and transaction finality, and that is so, so important. And on top of that, Algorand blockchain will never be forked, <laughs> super important as well, removing much of the uncertainty that has negatively impacted many well-established blockchain communities. Okay, in brief, you might want to ask now, how does it all work? 
For example, for a proposed block to be created to the Algorand blockchain, it must first be approved by a soft vote. The soft vote filters proposal down to one and before a separate committee casts a certification vote. And from here, every node in the network receive a certificate for the selected block, which is written into the ledger. Using cryptographic sortation, algorithms select users to propose blocks for each round. Then a selected committee of voters must receive a majority vote from participants before a block is certified. Then you might want to ask, that sounds very interesting and amazing and promising. How about the bad actors, right? The Algorand Byzantine Agreement Protocol is robust enough to tolerate any number of bad actors across the network, providing that honest actors hold a large majority of the total amount of algo staked to secure the network. This is because potential bad actors are clueless as which participant in the network they should attack to successfully corrupt the network. And also, by the time the bad actor are able to establish any selected participant that could be vulnerable to attack, the target blocks have already been confirmed and a new selection round initiated. And that is something that's so brilliant and personally I found so interesting about their consensus mechanism. Okay, Algo token, the native Algo token or Algo coin as it is commonly known, is the keystone of the Algorand ecosystem. The main use case for the Algo token is as a payment facility to pay for fees within the network. Algo is available through some of the largest crypto exchanges, including Binance and Coinbase. And I know some people also use them on Coinlist as well, so shout out to them. Moreover, the Algo token has a tokenomic structure including an updated 10-year distribution ending in 2030. There are 10 billion algo tokens that can ever be mined and that's very very important to take into consideration. This can be confirmed and publicly verified through the Algorand blockchain explorer keeping the official count of the circulating supply. The algo coin will be used through various use cases as well. Firstly, as a proof of stake blockchain, stakers of the algo coin will secure the network and receive rewards in algo tokens for doing so. Also, there are algo tokens set aside for the Algorand Foundation to ensure consistent development funding, such as I know that they are hosting and supporting hackathon endeavors in Australia, and they're extremely involved when it comes to education, which we'll cover that later on into the video. Algorand ASC1 Smart Contracts. Many smart contracts built on first-generation blockchains can be slow to propagate. This can hinder the scalability of any blockchain application and can be extremely costly to the user, especially when it comes to some projects suddenly get super, super popular and there is extremely amount of demand and traffic that will most likely for other first generation blockchain that will lead to high gas fee, which is something you don't necessarily want to pay. And what's different about Algorand ASC1 smart contracts is that they are offering an advanced, cost-effective, and scalable solution that can service complex and sophisticated applications, right? With all of I have mentioned and covered so far, right? I believe the team and the founders of Algorand, they really have thought out a lot of potential issues that will hinder the scalability of the blockchain, right? And I think it's extremely important for a project or a founder to do so, right? For example, it will be something more or less like this. If I knew that at 9 o'clock a.m. in the morning in Madrid, there will be a ton of traffic, then obviously I'm going to think ahead of time, what would I need to do to avoid that? 
right? Maybe I could just get up super early at six o'clock and then we'll go somewhere and drive, right? And then this way I will avoid all the traffic, right? It's always smart and way better to think about things and solve the problem ahead of time than personal opinion, right? Then launch something and little by little update them, issue the 2.0 version of something, which is totally cool. I believe each person or each project can play their own part. But back to the point, right? AS C1 smart contracts are executed on chain in a secure temper proof manner because their smart contracts are integrated into Augrand's layer one. They inherit the same near instant finality, scalability, and security. Again, security is extremely, extremely, extremely important in the world of blockchains. Some exciting parts. <laughs> as you want smart contracts can automatically enforce customized logic and rules, right? Smart contracts. When executing ASC1s, users can define the logic and flow of complex smart contracts. This smart contract can then be used in various modern financial applications. Algorand's ASC1 smart contracts are written using a new programming language called TEAL, Transaction Execution Approval Language, along with PyTAL, P-Y-T-A-L, which is a Python language binding. Although Algorand's ASC1 smart contracts can cater to the most advanced applications, they also come with easy to use templates. And that's a super, super important because you want more and more developer to build things on top of your blockchain, right? And again, easy to use templates are super, super helpful. This significantly lowers the barrier of entry to non-technical users that wish to incorporate smart contracts into their financial products. Plus, Augran offers stateless smart contracts templates that can be used for voting, auctions, crowdfunding, and much more. Algorand Standard Assets ASAs. So what are ASAs? They're highly customizable digital assets that can be used for a range of purposes. They provide a uniform standardized layer one mechanism that can represent many different types of assets on the Algorand blockchain. This includes fungible tokens, non-fungible tokens, stable coins, and much, much more. In today's economy, there remain many issues when it comes to the digitization of assets. These challenges include access to global digital markets, 24 seven transfer transferability, instantaneous settlements, ease and enforceability of assets controls, efficiency of administration, such as in compliance and reporting. Furthermore, ASAs make compliance and administration and reporting simple and straightforward. With ASAs, users can quarantine accounts for investigation and force transfer assets when needed for legal or regulatory reasons. And that is something extremely, extremely interesting, right? SAs offer a flexible asset reserve model for custom business requirements, along with off-chain assets documentation, assets spam protection, and a whitelisting model for privilege transacting. SAs are extremely fast, secure, and cost-efficient. SAs are highly interoperable and hold unique functionality. In the end, ASAs make it simple for users to issue and customize assets that are well suited for various use cases. This includes fungible tokens and non-fungible tokens, such as NFTs, in-game assets, stable coins, certifications, real estate, government issued fiat, and much more. And one of the key feature of ASAs is role-based asset control, RBAC. This provides optional and flexible asset controls for issuers and managers for business compliance and regulatory requirements. And my personal take to sum it up, what we have talked about so far is that in comparison of 
a lot of other blockchain projects are started by people who are in their 20s or in their 30s, which is totally fine. <laughs> Absolutely. You know, this is a big industry. Everybody have their voice and have their power to realize what they would like to see in the world, right? But in this case, the MIT professor and inventor, Professor Silvio Michelli, he is someone that is extremely, extremely experienced in computer science and cryptography. And they have set up this structure and built it in a way that, again, I have mentioned before, take care of all the possible questions and issues down the road, maybe 5, 10, 20, 30 years ahead of time. And then they can use their time to focus in on the most important thing, right? Which is back to the point. Personally, I genuinely believe that Algorand is doing something good, is doing something amazing, which is decentralized, stable, and secure, right? And I think that is extremely, extremely important in the world of blockchain and in the world of innovation, right? And also, not only the concept needs to be cool, not only the technology needs to be there, but also it must to truly pave the road for the real world applications, right? Because I genuinely believe that the world has changed so much from the idea that if you build it, they will come. I think not only you have to build it first, but also you have to build it so well that you have to have a vision that is so far ahead, but also at the same time, make it smooth for all different kinds of players to get on your blockchain, to be in part of your community. So with that said, definitely check out more about Algorand. And they have so much information, amazing things, and being updated nearly every day on their websites. Part two, everybody, let's talk about applications. Have you heard of Yoli? <laughs> Yoli is a new decentralized finance DeFi suite offering various financial instruments developed on top of the Algorand blockchain with partners including CMS Holdings and Long Hash Capital. Yoli is being launched as an IDO initial DEX offering through the Trust Swap token launchpad between May 21st and May 26, 2021. Yoli will allow developers on Algorand to implement staking and social reward systems within decentralized applications built on top of the blockchain. A staking and social award system, personally, I believe, is such an important part to keep the community engaging and hence with various other reasons I'm about to say, I believe that they are doing a great job. Okay. Yoli is centered around four key elements. The first is the ability for ASA token holders to, seam to seamlessly create financial products with purpose-built smart contracts that can be used for non-fungible token, NFT distribution, and yield farming. Similar to PancakeSwap on Binance, Smart Chain, Yoli offers a no-loss lottery, the only such application currently available on the Algorand blockchain. Okay, you might want to ask, what does it mean? <laughs> this means that rewards within the ecosystem are aggregated prior to fair distribution to users on the platform. And again, fairness, transparency are so, so important for everybody in the space and I believe for every single person in the future generation, right? Yoli also offers a token bridge to the Ethereum blockchain, expanding the use case and pathways of ASA tokens. Upon further adoption of the platform, Yoli will introduce other token bridges to additional external blockchains. Plus, as the adoption of the platform increases, the liquidity within the Algorand ecosystem increases as well. Yoli plans on launching an automated market maker, AMM model, decentralized exchange DEX to unite the ecosystem when there is sufficient liquidity on the platform. And 
definitely ambitious plan and i do have faith about the team to execute it so definitely something extremely interesting right and this is one of my favorite parts the algorand foundation the algorand foundation is a company limited by guarantee clg with the incorporation issued by the accounting and corporate regulatory authority in the republic of singapore Together with our community, we are building trusted, public, and permissionless infrastructure for the borderless economy. And what they're about, exactly. The Algorand Foundation is committed to the future development and sustainable mass adoption of blockchain technology using the Algorand protocol and open source software with a dedication to open, again, permissionless public blockchains. The Algorand Foundation seeks to create an inclusive and borderless financial ecosystem that allows anybody, anywhere to benefit from a modern blockchain-based monetary structure. Decentralization is at the heart of the Algorand Foundation. As such, the Algorand Foundation will oversee a move towards a decentralized and governance structure following a successful proposal for the long-term future of the Algorand ecosystem. And they definitely have amazing foundation. Um, they definitely have amazing team with Sean Lee as the CEO, my dear friend, Jason Lee as the COO. And they have amazing chief economist, head of marketing, head of people, principal researcher, head of global ecosystem and technical operations, senior legal counsel. Definitely strongly recommend everybody to check it out. Al Grant, Dow Foundation, forward slash about us. So with that said, let's wrap it up this amazing episode, huh? The Algorand summary. Algorand envisions a world where everyone creates and exchanges value efficiently, transparently, and securely. Using the AlgoCoin and an attractive suite of products, the Algorand Foundation is promoting global trust through a borderless decentralized financial ecosystem with the Algorand blockchain at its core. Combining elegant technology with simple intuitive designs, Algorand provides a suite of blockchain-based tools and services with a low barrier to entry. Using the pure proof-of-stake consensus mechanism, Algorand aims to solve the blockchain trilemma of being decentralized, secure, and stable without sacrifice. And... In the future, we can expect to see both private and public blockchain offerings from Algorand along with layer two smart contract functionality and special shout out to obviously the Algorand Foundation and their bounty program that made this episode possible. And everybody check out and go ahead and learn more about Algorand. If you have any question, feel free to comment down in below and go check out the Reddit, go follow them on LinkedIn, go follow their news, what they're up to, because from my understanding, not only about technology, but it is a group of very focused, very dedicated individuals. And at the same time, they're extremely smart. Just um, coming together and just coming together and working towards a vision. So I would say that definitely worth our attention and our support. With that said, thank you so much. The management and the advocacy side of blockchain, but I've learned a Absolutely. lot on uh, developing on Algorand as well. So, so this is Absolutely. quite exciting. Yeah, that, that was a yeah, good experience. Yeah, yeah. Just judging yeah. everything, looking at every different project. Mm. Right. Because I think this is also one thing that extremely important in blockchain space and in any tech space in general right not only the tech knowledge part needs to be there and the vision needs to be there but also that part must be closely working with the business aspect right because there the logistic needs to be there uh the mass adoption needs to be there the user needs to be actually love it actually solve the problem in their life versus just thinking yeah. about this idea that oh we think it's a great vision it's gonna work but at the end mm. of the day like people still need to use it right there so i think the important uh genuine feedback from the business side is extremely extremely important um in the blockchain space completely so. agree with you 
Yeah, I mean, think about it. It's like baking a cake, right? So my wife likes to yes. bake, and I enjoy uh, <laughs> her, uh, her baking. And and one part of it is nice. like, there's a lot of ingredients to produce the cake, right? And right, in a layered absolutely. cake, thinking of the algorithm itself, it's a layer one protocol. And then it's uh-huh. not just the protocol itself. You've got to think about, you know, the other layers itself, you know, the application layer, the uh, specific real world use cases, uh, the, the digital asset or the cryptocurrency aspect of it as well. So there are many layers to it and, and it all comes together. And so we need to think about all different facets of it. And that's why I really like um, having a really diverse and super intelligent people part of the foundation that helps us with the decision making. All of us come with our different skill sets and we essentially uh, think about all the different factors in terms of growing the ecosystem altogether. When you're in a meeting with someone or when you're eating something, is this what I want to eat? Or has someone just put something in front of me, right? And and say that, hey, if this is something that you don't want to do and you're doing something that that is not intentional, then don't do it, right? Uh, but a caveat to that, sometimes, you know, like, sometimes I, I, I wake up at 5 a.m., go to the gym. It's like, oh, is, is waking up at 5 a.m. something I want to do? Sometimes I say, oh, no, I just want to sleep in, right? But I know it's in the discipline of waking up early, going to the gym, starting the day strong, would lead me to a life of success. So then you say, oh, right. I don't feel like going to bed, but yes, I want to be intentional about waking up early oh because uh, this is something that I want to stay disciplined in doing. So that's an yeah. example of, of like catching yourself whenever mm-hmm. that you, you are you're in an activity. Is this something that I want to do? Maybe Jazzy may think, oh, is this someone that I wanted to interview in my podcast while you're halfway interviewing them, right? Or in any activity that you're doing, right? And then the second one is that when you get a moment to start planning out your future and say that, hey, because some things need planning, right? So, so right. You, you would say that, hey, if I want to, let's say, make a trip across halfway around the world, is this something I want to do? And if I'm making a trip halfway across the world, what are the activities that I want to do? Because I'm going to invest a lot of time and energy and effort to be a, around halfway around the world and find out, is this something that I want to do? And imagine if you can lead a life of intention with every single aspect in your life, whether in, you're in the crypto blockchain space or whether you become a father, mother, having uh, children and everything like practice being intentional in life. Don't just like, you know, oh, I'll decide when I cross the bridge or uh, uh, it is what it is and I'll just, you know, uh, let it be and then figure it out along the way, you know. that that There's this time and space for that, but you cannot let that be your entire life altogether. Just practice being intentional.